Welcome back, Ligari Nation. In this video, we will show you how we upcycled this dining table that we purchased during a Goodwill haul. The link to that video will be below. If you have an outdated table, order some products from our website at www.ligari.com and bring your furniture back to life. All the products used in this project will be linked below. Now let's watch the process. All right, guys, we're ready for the primer. Um, I just want to go over the steps we took to get it to this point. So first thing we did was we bolted this leaf into the table so it can't move um, because we wanted to make this larger. Now, if you guys are coating the leaves, the best thing to do is to take it out, coat it with your table, and then when you're done, sand those edges. So you would sand the edge on here and the inside edge on here and then they'll butt up nice and tight. So if you want to coat your leaf, that's how you would do it. We wanted to just make this a solid piece. So this thing's all bolted together. It's not going to come apart. Next thing we did was we bondoed all the seams. Obviously the seam where the leaf was, we bondoed these. Bondoed these, these corners here. It had kind of a lip, and a, a down lip there where the formica was at to the wood. Every seam we have, we kind of filled. Even on these tight corners, doesn't look like it got filled, but we, we smeared some Bondo in there, got it nice and tight, sanded that. And then we obviously sanded the table, got everything clean, wiped it clean. And then when I was leveling it, I noticed we have a big bow here in the middle. So these, these two points are touching and there's quite a big gap under here, which is fine because the resin is going to self level. but. Now that I know that, I'm going to pour the resin a little thicker. Um, that way we have plenty of product to level this middle out and also cover these outside edges. So we're going to do our stone kit process on this. We're going to tape the edges. We're going to flood it with a bunch of product, let it set up, pull the tape and let it flow over the edges. So we're going to coat this thing first. And I got it level both ways. We had to put some paint sticks under some of these legs to get it level, but it's basically ready to go. Um, so what I'm going to do before I prime is take that lint roller, roll across it to get any uh, remaining dust off, any, any uh, sawdust from the wood, and just that'll get it really clean right before we start. You can get these on Amazon. They're Scotch-Brite. These are the big ones. You can also use the small, normal ones you would use for your clothes, but this works great getting any of the remaining residue, maybe some cloth fibers that are on there from cleaning it, sawdust, debris, all of that stuff. So it's a great Ligari tip to do before you prime. And also when you guys are doing your top coat, say you sand it or something, clean your counters and then run over it with the lint roller. And that'll make sure you guys have a successful uh, flood coat or um, any coat that you guys are doing. It's gonna get all the, the remaining debris off of your surface. So starting out, sometimes it takes a second to, cause it's really sticky and it'll start to roll. All right, so you can see fresh lint pad and then all the debris, the dust, some fibers from the rags from cleaning, but a lot of sawdust and chunks 
So that would have winded up in our resin. So now we got a perfectly clean table. We can start priming on. So since this is a smaller uh, table, I'm gonna use a countertop primer. Um, these countertop primers will cover 50 plus square feet. So this table right here is only 15 square feet. And typically we use about 0 0.4 to 0 0.6 ounces of primer per square feet. So what I'll do is just take the square foot here, which is 15, times that by 0 0.4 and that gives me six ounces. So I need six ounces. I'm gonna make a little extra because the roller's gonna soak up a little bit. Um, so we'll probably make like 10 to 12 ounces. That way we have plenty. Um, but that's kind of how you guys can figure out how much primer you need, 0 0.4 to 0 0.6 ounces per square foot. Whatever amount of primer you guys make, you wanna add 10% of water. So since I did 12 ounces of primer, I added 1.2 ounce of water, mix that in. Um, so we're ready to prime. I'm not gonna use a roller trace, this is so small. We're just gonna dump a bead down the middle, roll it out, 3 8 nap roller, and then I'm gonna de-shed it with our lint roller. It's just a lot easier than doing it with tape, and it does the same thing. A few things on the primer. If you're doing like maybe a white, a white primer um, and you can see through the primer on your edges, right here, your faces, hit those with two coats. Let it set up for about 10, 15 minutes. Come through, hit your edges twice. That way you have a nice bright white edge. You want your edges where the resin is gonna flow over and be a little thinner. You want those as solid of a color of your primer as you can get. Um, and then this is a fast cure primer and it chemically bonds to smooth surfaces. I'll have them throw up a video to show you guys um, how amazing it is trying to chip it off of Formica that wasn't sanded or prepped at all. We just rolled it right on there and does not chip off. Um, the other thing is since it's fast cure, we can epoxy over this very quick. Simply put a fan on this and it'll, it'll flash dry in about 45 minutes to an hour and you can do your epoxy over that. You just don't wanna wait longer than two hours. So when you guys are priming, Make sure you're putting epoxy over this primer before that two hour mark, um, because this will set up and get rock hard just like epoxy, because it is a, a water-based epoxy primer. So when you guys are coating, if you're gonna prime, make sure you're able to put epoxy on it. Now, if you guys forget or you had to leave, um, you can sand it, scuff it up, or you can do like a denatured alcohol wipe on the primer, that'll get it sticky, and then you can do your epoxy on that. But try to prime an epoxy within that two hour window. So. I'll put a fan on this, we'll get it drying, um, and then we'll do the next steps with the epoxy. So next step before we mix is we wanna tape off our edges, create a dam to keep the resin from flowing off because remember we have a big low spot here in the middle and also we wanna keep the resin from moving so we keep that same exact design that we uh, have right after we're done pouring. So if you guys try to do our stone kit process um, without taping, It'll look great at first, and then once it starts to level out and move, it's all gonna flow off the edges, so that's why this tape's very vital for this process. Just using painter's tape, and since we have these rounded edges, we're gonna go a couple times around.
All right, last thing I'm gonna do is tape down here just in case it does start to bleed. We have more surface where that tape is at. To try to help seal that up. All right, so that's ready to pour. Biggest thing is making sure you guys press your tape down really good. We want to get a good tight seal everywhere. And now we're ready to mix. All right, guys, so I'm going to go over mixing. What we're going to be using is granite colored spray paint, silver Ligari effects. We have our black metallics in this bag and then our metallic epoxy right here. So um, when you guys are figuring out how much resin you need to do the stone kit process, um, you need about eight ounces of epoxy per square foot. Um, so you would just take your square foot, times that by eight, and that's how many ounces of resin you need. So we have 15 square feet, times that by eight. Um, that's about 120 ounces. And we could double check that, but I think that's right. So we need to make up 120 ounces of epoxy. So what I have here is I have two containers because I can't get 120 ounces evenly out of this. So what I'm going to do is 80 ounces of part A and then half of that is 40. 40 ounces of part B and that's going to make up 120 ounces. So we're going to mix up the clear resin first, get that mixed up, and then we're going to spray the spray paint into a cup to get it in liquid form. And then we're going to start doing our um, dirty pour batches for that table. So there's our 80 ounces. Now we're gonna go 40 ounces of hardener. All right, now we got our two amounts here, so I'm gonna add the hardener to the part B. Now we have 120 ounces of epoxy to use. All right, now we're gonna mix this up. Now when you guys are mixing your kits and stuff, it's always good to use a secondary mixing container. What I mean by that is mix in your first one for about one to two minutes, dump that into a new container, mix it again for about 30 seconds to a minute. That's gonna make sure you have no soft spots um, when, you, when you pour the resin out. Everything will get rock hard, won't have any issues with unmixed product. I'm gonna just scrape my sides really good, scrape the bottom really good. Um, I mix this stuff a lot, so I'm not worried about it, but um, it's always good to get in the habit of using secondary mixing containers. That way you guys don't run into issues with soft spots on your projects. So if you guys are using a secondary mixing container, you would pour the product out of here into that right now, and then you would mix it again. But I'm just gonna scrape these sides really good. Make sure I get all that part A that was in here first mixed in. So I'm gonna mix these metallics in real quick, and then we're gonna spray some of this into a container to get some liquid spray paint out. And we'll start doing the, the dirty pour process. So notice how I kept the paddle mixer in the epoxy, it didn't shoot a bunch of metallic powders in the air. So try to do that when you're mixing. You can also wear a mask, you can also mix it outside All right, so I'm gonna show you guys a little tip, Ligari tip, cleaning off your paddle mixers um, so they're brand new every time you guys use them. So I'll spin this off in the trash can. Actually, I can spin it off in our, our hardener bucket. We'll get the majority of the resin off. And we have a bucket of denatured alcohol. You can kind of see in here. We've used this about four or five times cleaning our paddle mixers off with put on low speed we're just gonna go back and forth forward and reverse
And then all I have to do is just wipe off the shaft here and this thing will be brand new. I'll usually just dip a little, get some of that denatured on the paper towel here. Now this thing's ready to go for another project. I'm not gonna have to worry about chunks of epoxy breaking off, getting into our, our coating. Um, really cool tip for you guys. And then get a bucket with a lid and we can use that over and over. So to get the spray paint in liquid form, we're gonna take paper towel. Make sure you guys shake up your spray paint cans really good. And we're just gonna shoot it in this cup, kind of cover it to keep the, the overspray coming out. So now we got some, some of that color in liquid form. So now we're ready to do our batches. I'm gonna try to pour all these at once here. It's gonna make a mess, but it's all right. I'm gonna make up a little bit more spray paint here. So what I'll do is I'll take the effects over to where we're at and I'll, I'll slowly add it in between pours to get more of these effects because a lot of these effects will go to the top and they'll get poured out right away. So I want to keep adding these to these containers. Now you can just pour stuff out randomly. It's going to look cool no matter what, but I'm going to show you how to map a design and kind of follow those lines. Simple paint stick. This is a tongue depressor. Paint sticks work as well. And we're just going to kind of scar this. See how it just kind of roughs up that primer? Gives me a shape to follow. All right, that's enough to follow. So what I can do now is start dumping these out. So I'm gonna be going for kind of smaller lines at first, and then we'll make them bigger as we go. So a few pointers when you guys are doing this is take note of the colors that are coming out because say I have a lot of black on this side and then I get down to my other colors and it's all the other colors and I only have it on that side. Still will probably look cool, but you wanna kind of jump around with each color, okay? So I know I got a lot of black coming out here, so I'm gonna add some of the Ligari effects into this just by simply squirting a little on the top. And now I'm gonna get some, some silver coming out of these next pours that I do.
getting close to the end. We got three cups left. We just want to make sure we're filling in these open spots and that we're not like putting so much resin on one half of this counter. That's why I've been kind of jumping all around as I go, making sure we're getting an even amount of resin everywhere on this top. We want to use it all because we had that big low spot here in the middle. All right guys, so design's done. Now I'm just gonna go through and make sure like we kind of have just a blob here. We can use our uh, tongue depressor. We can kind of just fine tune some of these spots, just chopping them up so they don't look like, like little blobs are poured out. So just go around your projects, fine tune any spots that you want to. So I'm gonna show you how to do really tight fracture veins like we have here. If you guys want to add more of those, it's a really cool uh, technique take a tongue depressor, something really thin, and we're gonna start it up there, because when I tilt it, it's gonna start flowing down. See how it's flowing down? So as I'm running it through, it's constantly getting some of those effects on the top. So I'll run, I'll run one right on this black line just to show you. So what I like to do is pour it on there, tap it, and then start. So you can create those really fine tune fracture veins with that. And the reason why I tap it is because if you, if you do that, it'll build up and then you'll set it down. It'll kind of be like a little blob there. So tap the bottom, get the excess off and then run it. But like I said, you can go through, fine tune any of those spots that you want. I'm gonna kind of chop that up because you've got quite a bit of the silver effects out there. So yeah, you can do gold, any, any one of our effects, you can do that technique. If you try it with spray paints, they tend to push out and like cover a big area. They don't keep that tight fracture vein. So um, just keep that in mind. If you're trying that with spray paints, it's probably not gonna be a nice tight fracture vein like that. Um, so what I'll do now, you can do the isopropyl, spritz it with isopropyl to create some more cells and crater looks. I like this look. So we're just gonna uh, mist it with denatured alcohol and let this set up for about probably 45 minutes to an hour and then we'll pull the tape and get those edges coated. All right, so it's been about a half an hour. I came back to check this and what I thought might happen is a lot of it's flowed to the middle where we had that low spot. Um, so I'm gonna show you guys how to fix that, uh, make it look a lot better. So still looks really good, but what I wanna do is get some more of that chrome, that silver effects out here, some of these other spots. And then instead of pulling the tape everywhere, I'm gonna just pull these edges. So the tape around this edge, tape around that edge to get those edges to flow because it is really thick over here where the low spot is. It's not as thick here. So I don't wanna wait as long to pull these edges where it's thinner. Um, so that's kind of what I'm gonna do now. And I'm just gonna use the material that is left in these containers. There's not a lot, but there's enough just to get some fracture veins out here with that, that Ligari effect silver.
All right, so now I got, I'm, I'm happy with the top. So what I'm gonna do is, like I said, I'm gonna peel parts of these edges off so they can start to flow over. So that's gonna slowly drip over. We'll let that drip for a minute. Now again, if we were to pull all the tape, these, these edges would just flow really crazy. They would pull a lot of this design away. We wanna keep this design close to as what it looks like now. And that's why we pulled these edges. So what I'm gonna do now, we have a lot of surface tension which isn't gonna fill in. So I'm just gonna brush this in, slick it off with the epoxy and then it'll start to evenly flow over. We just wanna get that whole surface coated with the epoxy. All right, so we'll let this set up a little bit longer because it's still too early to pull this face. Easy way to test is just kind of fold the tape back over. If the resin starts to flow down that tape edge real quick, you probably should wait a little bit longer. So if we just fold that back, it might be hard to pick it up, but a lot of that will just flow right off the top. So we're gonna wait maybe another half hour. I'll come back, periodically check it. When that starts to flow down that tape really slow is when we we'll wanna pull it because this middle is really, really thick. So. We'll show you guys that next. We are ready to pull the last bit of tape on here. Um, another thing I was gonna tell you guys, since these are tables, you can kind of tilt them, right? Lift them up to get the material to flow. Like say, say a lot of it flowed to one side. You can tilt this thing up, kind of get that resin to flow back. Um, so yeah, just keep that in mind. Since it is a table, you guys can kind of tilt it, move it around as needed. But the edges turned out great. We got the product kind of flowing over and there was, I think, this spot right here. One of these, I added some silver effects just to make that go down the line. But all in all, the edges look great, flowing over good. We just gotta address those drips later. So I'll pull this tape back, kind of show you what it's doing now. It might be hard to pick up, but it's just barely moving down. So that's, that's about where we're at. Now, it's always good to maybe pull it a little bit sooner. Last thing you wanna do is pull it too late and then not have the material wanna flow at all. And if that happens, you guys can take like a heat gun, a, a blow dryer, and kind of heat that product up and it'll start to flow over. Now we're gonna just brush our edges in. You can obviously tell the thick spots just flowing like crazy. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna push it tight to get some more product on this side. You just wanna get it all slicked off so it can start to flow over evenly. All right guys, so we'll let this kind of flow over a little bit, make sure our edges are good. Now you never want to just walk away from your edges, assume even though they look good now, you never want to just assume they're going to dry like that. So I always like to periodically go back, check if there's any spots that maybe are missed or this kind of looks like there's drips, you can touch those up with your hand or even a paintbrush. So never assume they're always going to look good. Um, so I would periodically check your edges for the next hour or so and then We'll scrape those drips with a paint stick and we'll show you guys that when the time comes.
All right, guys, so we are on to decking out the legs now. Obviously, we don't want to have this high-end looking tabletop and some nasty looking legs. So what we did is we took them off, took them all apart, and you can tell someone obviously smoked or something went on here because we have white where it was covered, nasty yellow. So what we're going to do to prep these is clean them really good with denatured alcohol and a rag. We're going to just scrub them really good. We're going to clean the wood legs part the little accent wood things on here, we're gonna clean that with the denatured alcohol. Usually those wood pieces have like a lacquer on them. The denatured alcohol will get it sticky and then we can spray paint right onto that. And then when these are all done, we'll be top coating the top with our matte urethane. And then I'm gonna roll on our matte urethane on all these two to, to kind of seal up that spray paint. Um, and these should last um, a very long time by doing that process. So we already sanded the top of the table. Now another thing, if you guys, this is a pretty small dining table, um, but some people have small kitchens, so it's fine. But if you guys wanna make this into like a coffee table, you could cut the legs shorter um, and you could actually just turn this into a pretty large coffee table, which would be cool too. So keep that in mind when you guys are buying these type of items from um, random places that you can always customize them. You can make them shorter, um, a lot of options with that. So we're gonna start cleaning these all up and then um, start spray painting. Got the spray paint here, we're doing black. I'm gonna be doing just a flat black, um, matte black, doesn't really matter because we're gonna do our matte urethane. Um, so I don't wanna get runs obviously, so I'm gonna do just a nice thin coat right now to get, get it kind of tacked up with some spray paint and then I'll do multiple layers. Thin coats is the best, obviously on vertical surfaces, we don't wanna get a bunch of runs on it. Um, and then obviously I got the wood pieces off the ground because I don't want them stuck there. This is, these go upside down, so I'm not worried about this edge because those wood pieces fit over the top. So I can have these just touching the ground, that doesn't really matter. So yeah, start out with a real thin coat. So that's it, we wanna just get kind of like a tack coat on it. We'll let this dry for about 10, 15 minutes and then we'll just keep doing coats until we have it completely covered in black. So we let the spray paint after two, three coats, we let it sit up for about 40 minutes, put some fans on it. Obviously you guys are gonna wanna let it sit a little longer, um, but we're gonna put it together. If we need to touch up anything, we can shoot it once they're on the table. So we're gonna put these back together, bolt them to the table, and then we're gonna do our matte urethane on the top of this table. All right guys, so before we top coat this, we're gonna do my lint roller tip for you guys. Um, rolling this across the surface, we sanded it, we cleaned it, but we always wanna make sure there's no debris, dust, rag, uh, lint, stuff on there that can get in the top coat and affect it. So this is an awesome Ligari tip for you guys. You can get these at Amazon, Target. It's a Scotch-Brite um, product and you can get them big like an actual paint roller. So you can cover a lot of square footage really fast. If you guys have the small ones for shirts, you can use those as well. These are just a lot easier. And then we're just gonna run over the surface.
All right, now we know we got a perfectly clean surface and we're not gonna have any dust or debris in our finished coat. Mixing our urethane's real simple, it's fast, it's an awesome product, it's super scratch resistant. Um, and our matte finish lays out extremely flat and smooth. Our gloss does have a little bit of a texture to it, but that's what makes it so durable. So we always like to top coat epoxy because glass smooth epoxies are not very scratch resistant um, just because they're so glass smooth. So these urethanes are an amazing product for um, um, durability, scratch resistance, stuff like that. So we always like to coat stuff, finish them off with our urethane. So this is a countertop kit. It'll do 25 square feet. We're actually coating another section of a counter um, right after this. So I'm gonna just mix it all up and then use that on the other counter as well. So we're gonna add our part A. Then we'll add our part B. And always make sure you guys shake these up a little bit just in case something's settled. And then we're gonna add two ounces of water. So whatever you make, you need to add 10% of water says it on the labels right here how much water to add so i have my two ounces here we're going to add that into the part b because it's a lot thicker cap it shake it up and then we're just going to stir this for one and a half two minutes we want to scrape the sides scrape the bottom all right so we got a roller tray three eighths nap roller and we're going to de-shed it with a lint roller. It's just a lot easier than tape. It's faster. You don't have to pull tape out and mess with that. And then I got a paintbrush just because I'm going to be uh, top coating the spray paint. We spray painted to lock that in and make it a lot more durable. Just in case I get any runs down there, we'll brush that in with the paintbrush. So we're going to simply dump into our roller tray. And again, this is enough for 50 square feet, so I'm not going to need a lot. We want to take a second, soak up our roller. Get it nice and saturated. And we sanded this top because it was over 24 hour period. So whenever your resin sits longer than 24 hours, you wanna sand it, scuff it up. That way you get a good bond with the urethane. If you're able to coat the urethane over your epoxy the next day, within that 24 hour window, you don't need to sand it. Now, if you have some uh, imperfections or something, you can spot sand those down, clean it good, and still urethane. You don't have to sand the whole counter. Another thing that's very vital I sanded the edges by hand with 320 grit. You never want to palm sand your edges. You want to be real careful on your corners. Um, so I like to do those by hand. That way we don't sand through because the edges are a lot thinner than your top. All right, so we're just going to run a, we're going to do this in two sections, run a bead down the middle, and then we're just going to cross roll it. And that's it. Before I move on, I always like to check, make sure I don't have any missed spots because I don't want to come back. If you guys roll this stuff out and then you notice something later on, you go and hit it, it's already tacking up, you're going to see that spot that you touched. So I always like to do sections at a time. That way it's not setting up on you. Don't try to do a large area at once. Um, and it'll make your process go a lot easier. So I'm just checking, making sure we don't have any drips anywhere, runs. Looks good. So this top's done. Now for these legs, I don't want to get a lot of product on here because I don't want to have runs everywhere. So it's pretty much dried out from coating that. So we're just going to start coating these legs. All right, there it is guys. We got everything coated with our matte urethane. So this table is gonna last a long time. It's gonna be extremely durable. Um, and you can see it's already drying on our edges. Some of these legs have already started drying. So it'll, it'll be a, have a little sheen to it until it completely dries out. So we'll probably throw a fan on this to kind of speed up that process. But we'll show you guys the final footage next.